Good morning and welcome to our online uh, session, our program overview for the Palmer Science and Engineering graduate program here at Lehigh University. My name is uh, Professor Raymond Pearson. I am the director of the Palmer Science and Engineering program. And uh, my contact information is on the first slide. So it's, uh, you know, my email address is rp02 at lehigh.edu. And my phone number, which is a direct line, is 610-758-3857. Uh, Lehigh, at a glance, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Lehigh, but we're recognized uh, to be a, among the nation's premier research universities. We offer a rigorous academic community with nearly uh, 7,000 students. Uh, graduate students are a vital part of Lehigh's community. And we offer graduate students opportunities to engage in stimulating uh, research with faculty and individuals who bring in their professional and industrial experience right into the classroom. Uh, key features of the graduate program, it's designed to provide engineers and scientists, managers and technical leaders in the industry with an integrated um, curriculum experience including theory and practice. Um, elective courses in statistics, project management, and leadership development. Uh, continuous lifelong learning opportunities to maintain the competitiveness of, uh, of your chosen field, which hopefully is polymers. Uh, there's a, a picture here with Paul Brigandi, who was a, a former PhD student, uh, online student actually, a part-time student, and Paul is now a, a well, he's back doing research with Dow, but he's also an online, uh, not online, he's a counselor with SPE. All right, the history of our polymer program, it's been around since 1975. Um, we started to work with the distance ed office in 1994. Um, personally, I've been involved with the distance ed office, I think, since 2000, so it's been 18 years. Uh, we have probably 40 plus students enrolled in our online program um, with various backgrounds in, in various locations across the country and I think I have a couple of international students as well. Uh, the, the program has developed and matured over the years and today the degree requirements reflect the increased number of Palmer faculty, uh, different types of courses, students and the latest developments in the Palmer field. So we have uh, two types of master's degrees. One is uh, a master's of science, which involves a thesis. And this thesis, uh, I'm kind of go going out of order with, with the slide. So the thesis, I'm going from the bottom up. The thesis uh, involves research and what we expect these students to accomplish is come up with a publishable paper. All right. So the Masters of Science, um, you know, is trying to get you to publish a paper. So doing research that will, is good enough to be in a peer-reviewed journal. The Masters of Engineering uh, allows you to uh, work on an engineering project. And, and now, actually, you can do up to six credits of an engineering project. The engineering project is something that you can work on within your company that's proprietary, um, will not be in, in the um, public domain, and, uh, but is, is, uh, can be more engineering oriented or it can be more researchy type oriented. Uh, both degrees require a total of 30 credit hours, and both of the degrees um, require that you go through our core course sequence, which is basically two basic, two introductory type um, polymer courses. The first one is an introductory to polymer science, which is really our polymer synthesis course at this point. And the second one is our physical polymer science course, which is uh, more focused on polymer physics. We require all of our students to have a thermodynamics course. And just recently, we did this last spring, we offered a thermodynamics of polymers. So you can actually use this course 
to fulfill that thermodynamics requirement. And then we have a, a number of specialized courses. So we have uh, courses in adhesion, mechanical behavior, nanocomposites, blends and composites, characterization of polymers, um, emulsion polymers, and polymer processing, just to name a few. I, I should mention that, and this question comes up, so I'll, I'll try to in, give you the, the answer before you ask the question, is our admission requirements requires that you have a bachelor's degree um, in chemistry, physics, or some uh, branch of engineering. And we require a undergraduate GPA of 2.8 or higher. Um, we can make some exceptions. Uh, the typical exceptions on the GPA is some people have a rough start and um, they do well in their, their junior and senior year. So if, if you have uh, a high GPA in your last four semesters, we can, we can accept something that's slightly under 2.80. If um, you have really strong recommendation letters um, that, that you're, you're performing well in your job and it's definitely polymer science and engineering related, uh, we do have the option to admit you as an associate student, which means that uh, we're required to monitor your progress and if you are doing poorly, we, we have to uh, release you from the program. All right, uh, we also offer an online certificate program. Actually, it's, it's also an on-campus on certificate, graduate certificate in polymer science and engineering. And this program was designed for people who do not need a master's degree but they do need either an update in polymer science and engineering or they're using this to um, complement another graduate degree. So for example, if we have uh, on-campus students working in mechanical engineering but they're working on processes that involve polymers, uh, then they can take four polymer courses and get this graduate certificate on, on their way to their PhD in mechanical engineering. If you're working in industry and you have a PhD in chemistry or physics with no formal training in polymers, you could take this online graduate program, graduate certificate program and, and quickly get, get up to speed. It's also used for those students that aren't sure whether they want to complete a master's program. So it's a way to start coursework at Lehigh and you can take four courses as a non-degreed student and if you decide that okay uh, I find this interesting and I want to continue on for my master's degree you can actually apply those four courses towards your master's degree so we have a lot of students that aren't quite sure they they want their master's degree right away and after taking a few courses they realize that hey this is something that interests them um, important qualities for polymer engineers and scientists, well certainly you will develop analytical skills, uh, you're, you'll be given homework problems that are open-ended so it helps your, your creativity and your ingenuity. Um, we do have the ability to take courses that help you with your leadership and, and teamwork skills and your graduate school is nothing but solving problems so you, certainly your problem solving skills will, will improve. Uh, career opportunities, uh, the careers uh, from scientific research to large-scale plant operations. So we have people that, um, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll change jobs. In a lot of chemical companies, you may have a bachelor's degree in chemistry, physics, or even engineering and be treated as a technician. Uh, I know there's some local companies that, that uh, use that approach and so you're not considered a true professional until you have a master's degree. So, so certainly it can help you uh, improve your, your career opportunities. Um, some students actually um, continue on in, in doctoral research. So, so the doctoral research 
option is, is always there. Example careers, well, you can be a polymer physicist, a polymer chemist, a polymer engineer. We have one of our students that is the director uh, of the research organization for, for um, their company. Uh, I've seen some people apply for teaching positions at community colleges with, with just a master's degree. So, so that's also possible. Academic excellence and the online benefit benefits to you. Well, this is a, an internationally recognized graduate program. Um, I think what, what most of our s online students like it is that it's convenient and flexible. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're watching archive lectures. Uh, the same lectures that are on campus stu students are, 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 are seeing. Uh, the only difference is, is that you can watch them when it's convenient for you. So if the class happens in the middle of the day and, and you can't watch it in the middle of the day, you can watch it when you get home at, uh, right at 6 o'clock or you can wait till 11 o'clock at night or you can watch it the next morning. Um, the degrees that are given out at Lehigh are the same, uh, same degrees that are awarded to the on-campus students. So that your degree doesn't say whether you've been on campus or, or online. Uh, this, is, this is my last slide, and this is probably um, one of the more important slides in, in this deck, and it talks about the whole admissions process. So there is an online application link, and, and there is information on the, the Distance Ed website on how to apply. And I think the, the forms themselves are pretty straightforward. The other issue is application deadlines. So you want to make sure that you get your applications in in a timely manner. So if you want to start in the spring, next spring, you want to make sure that your application is complete by December 1st. And um, you, know, you could apply now. And generally, we, we look at these every other week, so in a two-week period. And you should hear fairly quickly um, about our decision if you're, again, if the application is complete. If you're not sure you want to start in the spring, but you may want to start in the summer, we do offer classes uh, over the summer. Uh, and so we have a April 30th deadline for the summer. Um, and if, if you're going to apply for next fall, and, and we have people filling out applications now for, for next fall, and the, the, you know, the, uh, the application deadline is really July 15th there. Um, I think that's all I want to say about admissions. Uh, there's a tuition number uh, on this slide. Uh, I should mention that this is the tuition for the 2018-2019 academic year. Um, and like most universities, there tends to be a tuition increase for the following year. Um, I do want to mention that uh, you know, this information se session is recorded. So if you want to come back later and review um, the presentation you can. And uh, at this point in time, I'm, I would like to answer any questions that you have. Yes, we do have quite a few, Ray. Okay, good. Is there an opportunity to continue on to a PhD online? There is. So it turns out that Lehigh um, changed their policy, I don't know how many years ago. We used to require a one year residency and and now it's a one year um, I, I think it's intensive experience so as long as you're you're enrolled as a full-time student for two semesters in a row you you, you fulfill that education intensive requirement um, I have had several uh, part-time PhD students over the years um, and, and I, I should mention that I've had probably around 10. And my success rate has been two students out of 10. And, and it's not that the eight students couldn't make it. 
it, what mostly happens in, in their cases is they get promoted. And, and, and their, their new position requires so much time that, that they have to give something up. Um, so it, it is possible to do a PhD online. Uh, you'd have to be in a research environment um, and, and the, basically the proposal would have to be approved and actually you'd have to apply for the PhD program with a, a good plan for, for your dissertation. Good question. Do you have any other certificate courses like in load molding, resins, plastic, recycling? Um, our, we have just one certificate. So the certificate is in polymer science and, and engineering. Um, we have injection molding experience. We have you know, composite processing experience. We actually have additive manufacturing experience. Uh, or expertise on campus. But I don't believe we have anyone in our faculty presently that, that does blow molding. Is this program open for international students? And what are the requirements with TOEFL scores? Um, the TOEFL scores, so th this program is starting to open up to international students. I, I, I've had a couple. Uh, my concerns with opening up to international students had, had to do with proctoring, um, and, and it turns out that now you can have online proctoring, so it, it makes it a little bit easier. So we're, we are um, opening up to international students. The TOEFL scores are, are the same for on-campus students, and, and the whole purpose of having, uh, and I don't remember those requirements off, offhand, you have to look that up online. Um, the whole purpose for having TOEFL scores is so to make sure you understand the English. So when you take the exams, you'll, you'll understand what we're asking for and you'll be able to respond in, in, in an intelligent way. So I, th I still think TOEFL is, is going to be very important for international students. So other than the TOEFL score, sh there's no other prerequisites for international students? Uh, they, they still have... Uh, for international, we, we, there shouldn't be. You know, we normally ask for on-campus students for GRE scores, but with, this program is really meant for people with industrial experience. And so with that, I equate that uh, in industrial experience as being able to pass at least the GRE exam related to polymers. So uh, we, we waive the, the GRE scores. What is the total cost for the master's program? Well, so the, the master's program is 30 credit hours times $1,500 a credit hour. Uh, is that 45000 <laughs> Thanks. $45,000. Well, plus interest because the, the, the tuition can go up. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the classroom experience and exams workload outside the classroom? Well, that's a, that's a great question because the, the, you know, the first thing that always happens with new students is they'll come in and they'll want to take two classes uh, their first semester because they want to get that degree as soon as they can. A and a full-time graduate student at Lehigh is taking two classes a semester and they're spending the rest of their time performing research. So two, two classes, it, 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 a semester is, is a huge workload. And so if you have family pressures and, and job responsibilities, I wouldn't recommend it. I've had a couple of students try it. Um, you know, some continued. I would say most said they would never try it again. Uh, so I, I do not recommend taking more than one course a semester. Now we offer courses during the summer. so you're allowed to take three courses every year. So and basically you could finish up in three years plus one semester. Is there an opportunity to have graduate courses from another university transferred for credits to the program? De depending on the course. So th that's the, the, the best thing about a master's program is if that course that you've taken at another university 
Matt's is a course that we offer at Lehigh, then you can petition to transfer those credits and you can transfer up to nine credits. So three courses. And this master's in engineering program be accepted for the PhD program if they do just pursue that? Right, so the, the, the master's, the credits from the master's program. So at Lehigh, if you came in with a bachelor's degree and you wanted to get your PhD, you would need 72 credit hours. If you come in with a master's degree, you would need 48, so a master's degree from another university. So again, you spent 30 <coughs> credits there, another 48 from Lehigh, you have 78. And that, that, I should mention that's the minimum amount of credits, not the maximum. You still have to complete that dissertation, which is, which is what gets you out. Um, if you get your master's degree at Lehigh and you continue on your PhD, um, it would be 42 credits more than that 70. Sorry, more than that 30 to give you 72. So if a student plans on taking a few courses as a non-degree student and decided to then enroll in the graduate program, would those classes count towards the degree? Yes, and, and, and a lot of our students uh, that's how they come into the master's program is they're not quite sure that uh, you know they need that degree or they're not sure about what the curriculum is going to teach them and I would say you know nine out of ten students that come in that way uh, stay in the program for their master's degree. Would a potential student with a degree in plastics and polymer engineering technology be considered for the online master's program? As long as it's a, uh, a bachelor's degree from an accredited university, that's technical enough for us, so that would, that would fit easily. And could you talk a little bit about the exams and how they're held, proctored? Yeah, so, so that's, that's a good question, in, in fact, uh, I'm teaching the, the intro course, intro to physical polymer science course this semester and we're ready to have our first test. And I'm getting all these questions from, from the students who are enrolled in the program. Um, basically we have someone in the distance ed office who's in charge of, um, uh, of helping you identify who your proctor would be. So in some cases the the uh, certified proctor is a supervisor at work. Uh, in some cases, people don't want to get, get their workers involved and they can go to a community college or a library. We have agreements with various community colleges and various libraries and, and identify a proctor there. Um, I'm not sure about the um, the proctoring, the online proctoring program, I'm not sure how much experience we have with that now. I know we're using it for some of the international students. I'm not sure if the domestic students, uh, those proctoring, that online proctoring service, uh, of course, would cost something additional. Could you explain the difference? Why would someone want to take the MS over the MEng degree? It's funny, the, the, uh, when I first started doing this, we had a lot of chemists uh, get a master's degree from this program. A and uh, they preferred to have the masters of engineering because they, are, they consider themselves to be engineers. Um, it, it, I, I don't know if it makes a big difference to employers. I, I think if you're going to work in a research environment, uh, then a Master's of Science makes much more sense uh, because you, you will be doing some research and um, you know, we'll emphasize those, those types of skills. The, ma the Master's of engineering, engineering can be completely coursework. So you can take 10 courses. You don't have to do an engineering project. It could be just 10 courses. And some people like that because uh, some of them may not be in an organization that allows them to, to do work on site. So it, it, I think it's personal preference myself.
Can you share some examples of the students, our alum, and where they are, courses and companies? So typically, where do our alum work? Where are they employed? Uh, wow, there's a, a wide range. So some, some of these people are working uh, for large companies. Some of them are working for small companies. Um, some people uh, change companies. Um, so that, that's hard to say. So the, the companies that, that are involved, I don't think we're breaking any NDA there, but we, could, we, we know where the students are, are from. So we have people um, at, you know, in Minnesota. If you think Minnesota, you, you probably would think uh, 3M. Uh, we have people in California, Berry Plastics. Uh, we've had people at Florida. We've had people from Armed Services, actually. Uh, take the online program as well. Uh, so the host uh, uh, of places, um, there was one entrepreneur that uh, basically had her own company. And, and this is in the days where we still were doing satellite, not online. And she bought a satellite dish for her house. And that's how she, she, she watched the, the courses live. Um, what do they do afterwards? So. Um, that's a difficult one. I don't always get feedback. Um, most people uh, are, are counting on, on uh, some sort of change in, in their job responsibilities, if not a, a different job uh, within their company. Uh, it may not happen right away. Uh, it, it may take some time. Uh, again, I, I've had uh, students leave one company uh, for a promotion in another. And, and and we probably shouldn't advertise that because we, we want your employers to invest in you for, for their purposes and not for someone else's purposes. Um, so it's, it's a wide range. Is there a maximum number of years the program must be completed in? There is, and that's a really great question. It, both for the master's degrees and the PhD degrees, because our timing requirement is the same timing requirement for, for on, full time on campus students. So, for the master's degree, you have six years to complete all your coursework. And, and if you go beyond that six years, you either have to petition to continue, and uh, some of the courses that you had taken six years or seven years earlier would have expired, and so you lose those credits. Um, so, so that's a good question. For the PhD, the, the PhD, oddly enough, is seven years. So it's only one more year um, uh, after the master's. Um, so, so it's, it, it, I think the timing on the PhD degree is, is more uh, stringent than that for the master's degree. Most of our students, I would say, finish up in three to four years. Are there any prerequisites for this program? You know, when we had more involvement from chemistry, there, there was some prereqs that, that were important there. Um, my advice is, you know, you should have at least some knowledge of organic chemistry, even if you're a mechanical engineer. So we've had several mechanical engineers come, come through our program, and my advice is to go to a community college and just take an intro course in organic chemistry. It'll, it'll help you tremendously. So I think organic chemistry helps because you're looking at polymer structures all the time, so it, 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 it's meaningful. Uh, the other one is math. Um, so you know, it turns out that in engineering, uh, you know, our students take two semesters of calculus, differential equations, and, and even a, a three-dimensional uh, calculus course. So, so the math is pretty sound. Uh, I would say in our courses, if you uh, have taken one or two semesters of calculus, that's probably enough. Um, I have in the past admitted a student in environmental science and didn't realize until after she started taking courses that the highest level math course she had was algebra. A and, and she struggled um, um, because some of our courses do have a, a, a high math content. 
How many semesters in the program? I'm, I'm thinking she's asking 13, 15 weeks in a semester. Oh, how long is a semester? So, so a semester is typically about 15 weeks in, in the fall and the spring. There's some uh, breaks in there. We have a pacing break in the fall and a spring break in the spring. Uh, during the summer, they're a little bit shorter. So, uh, and it's still for the same three credits. They're, they're 12-week courses. And, and so what happens there is I'm trying to put essentially a 14-week course in a 12-week period. So I, I, instead of having two 75-minute lectures a week, I will have, uh, some weeks we'll have three. So just to squeeze all the lectures in. What accreditation does the program have and adhere to? So we're a master's program, so we're not ABET accredited. ABET accredi accreditation is for undergraduate degrees. Um, we are, uh, we are accredited, oh, I should, uh, we, we are accredited by middle states and we just uh, finished our, our latest accreditation process and that, that accreditation is for, for the uh, whole campus and, and we're part of that. Is experience like work experience or credentials a substitute for coursework? We can't give you credit for experience, but that's a, a commonly asked question. Um, it does help you uh, conquer these courses a bit faster and a bit easier. So it will help you, uh, but, but unfortunately we can't give you uh, graduate credit for your experience. Roughly how many years in average, a PhD student takes to get their degree. So let's PhD say online. Student. So we, uh, I should admit that we, we rarely have online PhDs. That, that, you know, and and that they have to be exceptional students. Um, for the on-campus PhDs, um, we're talking uh, typically five, maybe six years full time. I think so far we're good. One more question about the GRE. Okay. It is required for international student candidates or just campus students? Well, you know, I haven't, I haven't uh, thought about that. Uh, we don't require it for our domestic students, so I'm not sure why would we we require it for our international students who are also working in the polymer industry. The, the same reason for waiving that requirement uh, would be there. Uh, again, we're just starting to open up our online program to international students. What are some of the electives that you could take part of the program? Right. So. Basically, you could take, this is sort of the, the misconception, is you could take 10 polymer classes. Some people believe that they can only take eight and they have to take electives. And, and, and that's not true, especially now since we have a, a thermodynamics course uh, in the polymer program. So we encourage people to take uh, elective courses, they're graduate courses, so they have to be and, and in Lehigh's nomenclature, 300 level courses and above. And they could be in, um, in industrial systems engineering, they, it could be in chemical engineering, uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, we've even had uh, a student take a business course or two. Um, and so what will allow that. Uh, typically we'd like them to be engineering so we don't we don't allow more than one business course. That could be chemistry courses, physics courses. Again, if they're outside our college, it's one. If it's inside our college, they can be two. Um, so it, it's really what the student is interested in. And, and uh, since they're electives, it's what they think will help them professionally. And, and a lot of them will ask for advice. Um, and, and, and the question is, is, well, what should I take? And, uh, 
normally the, my response is, well, what are you interested in? What do you think you need uh, to do better at work? And I think that's what the question was, that it's tailored based on the student's area of interest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so a question here, graduated 13 years ago, would this be an issue for applying to the master's program? No, no. I, I remember um, I had a, a, a student in, in, I think it was my mechanical behavior course at, from Roman Haas at the time. Roman Haas no longer exists. They were bought by Dow. And, and I thought this guy was a, you know, a whiz kid. He was acing every test. And, 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 you know, and I, was, I, I met him at some sort of event. Roman Haas is located close to Lehigh. And I was expecting to see this 24-year-old, uh, you know, new college graduate, and it turns out this was a mid-40s um, person, a, a midline manager at, at Roman Haas. So, I just just then decided to, to 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 take some graduate courses. And I think you may mention this. How long typically takes the application acceptance process? It, it, ti timing is everything. If I'm not busy, <laughs> and uh, Lisa Aretchika is our um, graduate coordinator, she will notify me when there are completed applications on CollegeNet, and I will look at them um, after her notification, typically within a two-week period, a and so we can give, give a, a notice then. Um, Sometimes what happens is people will finish their application, or at least they think they're finished with their application, but they don't have their official transcripts. And you know, for us to officially ex admit someone, we do need the official transcripts. Now, we can give you a hint of what our decision's going to be, but we can't make the decision with, without the official transcripts. What is the typical duration of an online teaching session? So typically, uh, I have, uh, and I think most of our instructors will teach 75-minute courses. A lot of our graduate courses are, are two 75-minute lectures per week. Um, in addition to that, I typically offer um, my online students a, uh, a review session before the exam so they can actually talk to me live. They're, they're always free to call me or send me an email, but I normally don't hear too much until an exam comes up. And I, I like doing the online review process because uh, normally the questions are very similar. Or someone will ask a question that another person wouldn't have thought to ask, but it's very, very meaningful for them. So, so I like to do a, a one hour um, review session before each exam. And I think you answered this. How are the end of the semesters assessed? Do you do finals, midterms? Right. So each course is a bit different. So, you know, the, the course that I'm teaching now, my intro course, I, I, I give two exams and a final exam. Um, all three are proctored. I have some other courses where I will just give a midterm and a final exam. The midterm could be a take-home exam. Uh, the final exam is, is definitely always proctored. The final exams, I should mention, are typically three hours long. All right, and the other exams, if they're not take-home, are typically 75 minutes. Is there an application fee? Yes, it's $70. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was easy for me to, to answer. Yeah. I think you pretty much answered quite a few. Okay. Yeah, if you have additional questions, again, you have my email address and contact information. Um, if you know it now and you want me to to respond back, just leave your contact information in your text chat and, and uh, I will get back to you. One last one. 
Any okay. scholarships, merit scholarships, financial yeah, we're, aid? We're getting a lot of uh, questions about financial aid. And you know, we have financial aid for on-campus students. Um, you know, they, they need to eat and, and have a, a hotel, uh, not a hotel room, an apartment. Um, you know, for people working in industry, you know, our assumption is, is that they're already making enough to have this, uh, the basics uh, to survive. Um, so we do not, at this point, offer um, any financial aid for on-campus students. I, I think we do offer um, a program where we, I, I guess you can arrange with, maybe it's the distance ed office, where you don't have to pay your tuition until the end. That is correct. It's deferred. Yeah, a deferred payment program. A and a lot of students like that because, you know, $4,500 up front and then waiting 15 weeks before you get reimbursed is a pretty, pretty large investment. So there's a deferred payment program where you, you can um, essentially pay once you get your grades. Or maybe it's just before. <laughs> I think it's after. Okay. I'd like to thank everyone for your for their times and uh you know if you have any questions please give me a call or email. Thank you.